All right, we're live. Hey guys, Frank with Tithely. Um, great to be with you this morning. Uh, it's, a, it's a Friday, so Fridays are always good days. Um, it's nine o'clock out here on the West Coast. Uh, I come from you from my sort of home makeshift office out in San Diego, California, where we are still uh, sheltering in place over here. And uh, this morning, I'm joined by Corey Dellenbach. Uh, Corey, it's great to have you, man. Hi, nice being here. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. And uh, Corey comes to us all the way from Wisconsin, somewhere two hours outside of Green Bay. So I don't even know where that's at. I know about the Green Bay Packers, uh, but you know, outside of that, my my Wisconsin knowledge is pretty pretty low. <laughs> that's all you need to know about um, is the Packers. The, are you a Packers fan? I assume uh, very much so. Yes. Okay. Okay. I think. Mean, you should have come with like a Packers jersey on or something. I don't know. Brett Favre is Brett Favre still like the the hero or? Oh yeah, most definitely. Okay. Aaron Rodgers is a second it. right now too. Aaron Rodgers is still yeah, he's still in California second place. Boy. Yeah, um, man, it's it's uh, like I said, great to have you. Uh, we've been doing the show. If you're joining us live, we've been doing the show every day for a few weeks now, and just talking with church leaders from all kinds of different churches all over the US. We're trying to get some folks from Australia and Canada and other countries that we uh, support as well. But right now it's been mostly US and uh, we're, man, everybody's in the church online, remote church, uh, you know, sheltering in place, doing it all from home. And um, it's just interesting to connect church leaders and to share ideas. That's what I think is the biggest value of this uh, this live show that we're doing is like church leaders being able to share their ideas um, from all different kinds of places. So, um, Corey, I'd love for you just to tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, you know, how you got into ministry, where you guys are, uh, where's the church, what's the makeup of the church, what, what's the size of the church, kind of all those kind of things. Um, so people have some context on this conversation. Definitely. Well, uh, I am actually the council president here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Rhinelander. Uh, we are about two and a half hours north of Green Bay, so we're in the woods. Um, like literally in the woods? Pretty much in the woods, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, Rhinelander is a small 7,000 community, uh, and nothing but trees, a small downtown, and a lot of churches. Wow. Wait, uh, a lot of churches? Yeah, actually, there's quite a few churches here in Rhinelander. Wow. We're at ELCA wow. church, and just one block away, we have another ELCA church. Wow. Yeah. Well, we're on a mission to get them all using Tithely, of course. So yep. we'll uh, <laughs> we'll send someone out to stay stay a week with you in the house and you know just walk around to all the churches. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and then uh, Emmanuel, we're about 100 members that worship uh, any given Sunday. We have two worship yeah. uh, services. so. That's who we are. I am. A, I've been a member here for seven years now. Uh, before that, I wasn't really involved in church. All right. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And are you from? Are you born and raised there? Or I'm born and raised here in Rhinelander. Yes. Wow. All right. Yeah. How did you get connected with the ELCA kind of church, and what what brought you to church? You know, seven years ago. My family has gone to this church forever. Uh, my grandfather okay. started going here, my mother, all of my aunts and uncles. And I just got away from it after I moved uh, down by Green Bay for a little while. And yeah. after I got married and my wife and I moved back up here, we wanted to get back into church. Her family was really into church. And we started looking around. We came to our church here to just check it out. And right away, as soon as we walked in, we were welcomed. and. Just yeah. fell in love with it. Yeah, yeah. Man, that that's home, right? The family's yep. been there for sounds like generations. And yep. um you go and into our fellowship hall and you can see all the confirmation photos from years past. So I show my kids my mom's kid picture up there and my grandfather. Yeah. There. Yeah. Wow, man. Generational. That's pretty yep. awesome. Um, well, let's, let's jump in. You and I were chatting on Facebook. That's kind of how this connection got started here. And you were saying how during, you know, sort of the pandemic and going online, uh, you've seen 
pretty big growth for your church in both the usage of the church app. You guys use the custom church app from Tidely and uh, the giving product from Tidely. So, um, so both of those you're seeing a big uptick. Um, so I'd love to just unpack that. Um, tell yeah. us a little bit. Maybe we can start on the church app side um, and just talk to us about like what are you what's you know what's in your church app and what you're seeing people use and how you're promoting it effectively. Those kinds of things. Our church app right now, we have uh, a photo gallery in there. We just added the sermon function when all this uh, coronavirus stuff started. Um, I post uh, our newsletter notes in there. I post our newsletter via PDF in there. Um, we do have the prayer function, but that doesn't get used a whole lot by other members. I use mm -hmm. it to post our uh, daily devotion. Oh, cool. So that gets quite a few hits. But since all this started, I mean, the sermons, we added that and we started recording. Pastor started recording her reading uh, the gospel and her s sermon. And we just post that and we just be getting hit with views or listens on that and downloads every Sunday and throughout the week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. So you guys, you weren't using the sermon feature at all before nope you popped we, it in as soon as so march 15th or whatever the date that that first kind of week um yep. you guys started recording yep that first week we start recording i have some digital recorders at home for my real job and i just give one to pastor every week and she just records herself and throws it back at me and easy enough to post so she does an audio she like it's an audio recording yep and it's a it's a little like digital recorder device yep. that she just just put that talks thing. into or yeah yeah really easy yeah, and very cool just hit record and I just download it onto my computer and away we go yep and then you upload it directly into the app or do you guys post them somewhere else as well like on iTunes or anything like that nope all we do is just post it directly to the app and then we also have it on our website as well. Got it. Got it. Okay. Really cool. And do you do any kind of, so you're posting the sermons that's driving uh, or the readings. I don't know if it's, it's not church that you're posting necessarily. Nope. It's just her, her kind of lesson. Yep. Um, and are you doing any kind of promotion? So like on Sunday, is there, you know, after church, like an email or anything like that, that goes out to just remind people to go jump into the app on Saturday mornings. I send out an email with our worship information for zoom. And I also uh, send out in that email just a reminder to uh, go to our website, check out this stuff, go to our app and get the information there and listen to the sermon on that. Got it. Got it. Very cool. So that's Saturdays. And then you guys do, uh, is there any other parts of the app that you, you're hearing people like enjoy or are you getting any kind of feedback, you know, whether it's responding to emails or calling you or texting you anything like that the photo gallery gets quite a few hits too um we have a lot of our pictures of our kids up there from uh faith explorers or sunday school um and that's the biggest one right there the photos and the uh sermons and then a lot of people go view our videos that we post on their on youtube and that gets shared on our app as well yeah i love i love the photo gallery i actually don't hear that you, as a feature that's used as commonly amongst you know the thousands of churches we have using the app so that's really cool that you guys are putting some effort into like getting the photos in there driving people back into the app to see just pictures of of what's going on are people doing any pictures of themselves while they're doing church at home and getting them to you and putting them in the photo gallery or anything like that yeah we've had a f little bit of that um it's more so video that we've been doing like back and forth people send me video of like their kids listening to worship or themselves and yeah, sending pictures of the area that they're sitting in. That was fun. Yeah. 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 I love that idea. So they'll post a picture or video or do they send it to you and you put it in the app? Is that yep, how it works? They send or it they to me and then I post it. Okay. Yeah. And I love that. It's like, so that's community, right? Like just photos and videos and it's the family kind of sharing, Definitely. uh, sharing their uh their picture gallery so that's super cool great yeah. uh great use of the photo gallery just that feature in the app um if folks are listening you don't have the photo gallery light you know turned on in the app um talk to the team because it sounds like it's working well for Corey and yeah. the crew over there 
Definitely do uh, it. How are you guys? If you have a photographer as part of your team. Definitely do the photo gallery. Yeah, yeah, no, it totally makes sense. So you you mentioned you send out the church info on Saturdays. How are you guys doing church? We are doing church by Zoom. Actually, um, we started. Okay. We started when we start on March fifteenth. Um, we started using Google Hangouts. We did that for two weeks. It just wasn't working for us. Yeah. We switched over to sense. Zoom after that, and that's been working out really well for us. We have about 60 uh, connections each Sunday. Um, and just the interaction that we get with the members on that, yeah. that's what makes that one our go-to. Right, right. Um, side note. Donnie's listening in and Donnie works at Tidely and he's like, Hey Corey, great working with you to set up your app a couple years ago. <laughs> nice. I remember Donnie. That's awesome. Shout out to Donnie. Donnie is the, uh, well, Donnie's done all kinds of things at Tidely. So building apps is one of his many skills. Um, awesome. Good stuff, Donnie. Um, so using zoom is interesting. So we talked to another church, uh, I want to say they're called the Fresno church or Fresno church. Um, Josh Ermler a couple weeks back and, you know, they've got a church of, I don't remember the exact number, you know, two, three, 400 members and they're using zoom exclusively for their church services as well. And they're loving it. Um, so uh, it's interesting to hear you also say you're using zoom and really digging that. What, what's the appeal for you guys? Like what really drives you or kind of makes you go zooms the platform or just, video based you know whether it's zoom or something else but like a on video we're all here seeing each other why is that working for you guys for us right now it's just the connections between the members um us being able to uh talk to one another um when pastor says the prayer of the day we can respond um that way she can hear us she likes doing a children children's sermon and for her that's way for her to get that interaction with the children yeah yeah. 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 So we'll, so do you guys create time sort of like almost fellowship and like chat before church and, you know, yep. I don't know, Ooh. come on early or, or a portion of it is just fellowship. I usually start the zoom meeting or sh worship about 15 minutes before. Cause you know, we always have those early people to church. Right. And yeah. Then, <laughs> That's a good point. And then uh, afterwards we do have what we call a coffee time where we stay on an extra 15 minutes and, just allow people to talk back and forth. Uh, pastor has been asking a question typically each week and just get responses. And it's a fun way for people to talk to one another. Right. Right. Yeah. I think there's, there's something to um, like the engagement. So just watching church via a live stream, I'm on my couch or whatever with my family and I'm watching it happen, but nobody sees me. Right. So yeah. I, but ha if we're on video, I, I think it just automatically drives up the engagement because you're on video and you're kind of participating, even if you're not, you know, participating in putting the service on, you're kind of participating in the community and it just builds up that engagement. And when you've got a church of, you know, a hundred or so getting everybody on zoom is pretty easy. Right. Yeah, um, it is and, very easy. Because you, you got you got sixty or so connections and there's probably some with two, three, five, like all kind of on the video together. Yep. Um so you get everyone my there family, and get to see each other. My three kids are there watching and my wife and I'm doing all the immediate people in on my computer. Yeah. I don't know how man, my kids trying to get them to sort of attend church online is is a challenge. I mean they'll <laughs> They have attention for a little bit, but there it's, I'm not, I'm not getting them for the whole time. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so very cool. Um, so let's, let's jump over into the kind of online giving part of this. Um, how has that part of it gone for you? Cause you were mentioning you've seen an increase there too. Yeah. Um, what was, what was giving like pre COVID and what's it look like now? We joined on with uh Tidely about two years ago, if I remember right. Um, I just saw it as a way for people to give, especially younger people. I mean, I don't carry checkbook with me. I don't carry a lot of cash with me. I know right. there are others too. So that's why we decided to go with it. And up until about COVID time, we only had two people giving online, myself 
and our <laughs> secretary. Uh, the two people that like decided and made it happen were yeah. the ones using it. Yeah. Yep. So it's it was like that for about two years. And now this past April, we had quite a few uh, more given online through Tidely, which was exciting to see. And yeah. a lot of yeah. them have already said they're going to continue that way because it's a lot easier. And did you guys do any like announcement as you were meeting online? Did you do any education? Like what, what did that look like? What kind of communication plan or you know, plan might be a strong word. Like what kind of communication did you do uh, once you guys went all online around giving? Around giving, we had notes in the newsletter explaining how, how to use it again, like we did when we first introduced it. Mm -hmm. um, we had a video on Facebook, some information on Facebook. Um, I put out my phone number for people to call me if they had any issues with it. Um, yeah, love it. And we highlighted- How many calls week. have you gotten? How many calls have you gotten? Only three. Hey, not bad. Yeah, and most of that's it was, cool. I mean, I love in that kind of environment like that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that should scale to any size church, but in that size church, you know, having a phone number of someone that they see probably every Sunday and they know, give them a call. Like it helps with the security and the confidence, and just like okay, someone's here to help me figure this out. So yeah. I love that. Yeah. Typically, I make myself so, available for any type of stuff if they have issues getting to Zoom or anything like that. Yeah. yeah, man, you and my brother Adam should connect because he's he's like you guys are like servants, man, like helping people, always there, handling all the tech, doing the live streams, doing everything. So it's, um, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome, dude. Uh, so so you had it in the bulletin. You had a video on Facebook. Did you do any kind of on Zoom live? Hey guys, now that we're online here's the way we need you to give was anything like that happening uh when we first started pastor would uh tell people the many ways they can give including tithely and uh you know dropping it off mailing it in and she does that each week that's got it pretty much the extent of what we do for that got it got it yep. yeah and that was that happening in service too same, not kind of the so same. much in service because in service we were they just do an offering plate, and we had card. We have cards in our pews, uh, explaining how tithe works and the steps to into your name and right all that fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, cool, man. Well, this has been awesome. I super appreciate your time, uh, and I'm. It, it's just cool, like hundred member church out in the forest, or at least like way out. Uh, you know, doing sort of you know, has a little bit of tech, added the church app, added giving a couple years ago, not major usage, a little bit of usage. Um, but then all of a sudden in this moment, you guys were ready yeah. and the, the usage just jumped off the charts for you. Um, it'll, be so, exciting. it'll be exciting to see what happens with it now that our stay at home kind of went away this last Monday. You were saying that. So tell, tell us what's going on in Wisconsin. Well, we were at a stay-at-home order, much like the rest of the country, until May 26th. Uh, but on Monday, our state Supreme Court reversed the decision, saying the governor overstepped his authority. So as of Monday night, uh, there is no stay-at-home order. Uh, a lot of bars throughout the state open up their doors right away. And Everyone's like, pretty, yes, let's go. Yeah, pretty much. It's just made national news been interesting wow so yeah. everything opened up and what how are you guys thinking about going back to church like there's, physically in the building there's been quite a bit of discussion about that we actually formed a response team for coronavirus and we get information from our synod and from the wisconsin council of churches yeah and right now we're we're not opening back up we want it to be safe for when people return like I said, we have an older group here that worships worships here, right? And we don't anticipate opening for at least a month, maybe more. We just want to make sure everybody is safe. Yeah, but err on the side of caution versus rushing to get yeah. everyone back. And it sounds like Zoom's doing a great job. So yeah, yeah, very cool, man. Well, Corey, thanks for joining us today. No problem. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, for everyone watching, thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, we'll be back on Monday. 
Um, we're going to have a great show. I mean, every one of these shows is great. <clears throat> On Monday, we're going to have uh, Pastor Larry Osborne from North Coast Church out in Vista, California, kind of San Diego area. Um, has a great church out there. We're going to talk about how they're leading through uh, the pandemic and what's going on over there at their church. And um, yeah, I just appreciate you guys coming. Have a great weekend and uh, we will see you on Monday. Thanks guys.